So one thing Power BI is really not great at doing is taking in new data or having the user have the ability to change the data that they're seeing on their dashboard. Obviously, it's great for all the visualizations, preparing and showing data, but sometimes you want to take your dashboard to that next level, have a little interaction, create some new records, save it to a data source. And that's exactly why the Power Apps visual is super useful for your dashboarding. So right now, hopping over to the Power BI service, notice we are not in the desktop application. I've got my net worth tracker dashboard up. No, none of these are my real numbers. They're just random fake numbers. But the dashboard itself has some parameters in it that allow user input to change different variables. But what I really wanted was an easy way to update things like my accounts, my bank accounts, my uh, investment accounts, any sort of debt accounts that I have. And what I've done here is I've brought in the Power Apps visual and I've had a simple form added in where we can make little changes such as um, changing the values. You can select asset or liability. You can change the name of the asset. You can even attach a file if you've got like a bank statement or an investment statement. And the Power App lets us do a little bit of write back here. And I've refreshed my data set, which is a SharePoint online list. And our 401k has dropped down here from 100 to 20,000, which was the change we made. And I'll show you how to build this write back capability here once we hop over into Power Apps. So the first thing to get grounded with is we're going to be doing right back in that we are pushing new records into a data source. So what data source are we going to use for simplicity? Anyone can get started with this. If you've got a basic uh, Microsoft 365 license, it is a SharePoint list. If you go to the SharePoint that's created, um, sometimes it's created as the back end of your Microsoft Teams tenant, if you have that or you can just create your own site. If you have a 365 account, go into new and you can create something called a list. And you can think of a SharePoint list as almost like a Excel file that just sort of lives in the SharePoint ecosystem. You can even create a list by importing a standard Excel file. So I'm going to bring in a simple Excel file in which I have a formatted table in it. It's um, got three columns. It's very simple and it's going to do a little kind of auto load in here where it's going to read the data type. But basically what I have is I have a list of assets and liabilities for an individual, completely made up individual. And then I've got the name of the asset or liability or the account of uh, in which that we have a, a balance. So this is a personal balance sheet snapshot in time with values that we want to update uh, using a power app so that we can make our personal net worth tracker a little more dynamic. After bringing in that data from the Excel file and having SharePoint just read it in automatically, I'll give you a few more tips on the layout here. Like I said, it's, it's like an Excel file that lives inside of a SharePoint website. We have the ability, just like in Excel, to add a new column. You've got a few date types or sorry, data types in here, such as date and time, um, numbers, currency, that kind of stuff. You can even attach some images. We are just working with some simple data here. So I've got three columns, uh, as I've explained before, and this should be exactly what we need to start working with the Power App. This is the only time we will be in the Power BI desktop instead of the Power BI service. And I just wanted to show you that the source of my file here is that SharePoint list. So I have brought that SharePoint list, done very few steps in Power Query here. It's exactly the same layout we saw before in SharePoint itself. And that is the data source of my file. And the reason we want the, that to be the data source is, of course, we're going to be using the Power App to push new data into that SharePoint list, and we want it to flow through our dashboard. So publish your Power BI report, and let's go to the service and whatever your favorite browser is, and make sure you have a little real estate in your Power BI report. Go to the Edit button here, 
and over on our visual selectors, I'm going to click Power Apps for Power BI. Again, make sure you have some good real estate here. What it tends to default to do is like the standard like iPhone or mobile size view. And the first thing we want to do here is we want to bring in the fields or columns that are relevant for what we want to see in our Power BI or in our Power App, what we want to edit. So I'm going to bring in balance as well. I'm going to bring in type, right? Because that's just either asset or liability. And I'm actually going to bring in this ID field as well, just because that's going to be something that we do a, a lookup on later when we're in Power Apps. And I'm going to do a don't summarize here, even though it's numerical. And that's fine with sum of balance. Actually, I'll do don't summarize as well. You have the option here to choose an app or create a new one. So let's just start super fresh, click create new. So it automatically popped open a new tab in my browser. And this is called, it's what I call the Power Apps Canvas Editor. And we have the ability here to completely customize and build the entire user interface of the app that we're gonna have embedded in our Power BI report. So this was an automatic creation. It gave me something called a gallery. And if you look to the left here, this is showing you all the different items you have uh, automatically created in your Power App. If you make more, there's gonna be more organized in this kind of nice uh, collapsing ribbon, um, sort of tree-like organization. This is very important. Because we created the Power App Visual from Power BI service itself, it created this item here called Power BI integration. That means that it has a connection to our Power BI dashboard here. If we do any filtering in our Power BI dashboard, it's gonna translate over here as well. So this is a clear indication that you have gotten to this point correctly. So it automatically created something called a gallery here, which is just, uh, in my mind, sort of an organization of tabular records. And over here we have some settings, uh, things like a layout. If you click title and subtitle, you have some more options here, but title and subtitle is, it's gonna take that account name. And for each record, it's kind of got this reference to something called this item. So this item asset is that account name, and then this item type is that asset or liability. I'm gonna leave these the way they are and kind of ignore any formatting. Just to show you around Power Apps a little bit, if you're entirely new, we can insert different items here. So something like a text label, I'll put that at the top. This will be like our title header. Uh, we can center it, we can make it bold, we can change the background, which is located right down here. We make it blue, and we can call this the account list. Back to the insert area, you can put in some different icons and shapes. So one of them I'm going to do is just this plus icon, and that's going to create our ability to make an entirely new account for tracking our net worth if we want to do that. And I will also change the font color here so we can read it a little better. And resize the gallery. We've got a little carrot on this side. I'll make that a little more easy to see. And you can create an entirely new screen if you'd like. And they have some pre-made templates here. And the template I'm going to click is called a form. And what a form is used for is it's, it's used for saving data back to a table structured data source. So in our case, it's that SharePoint list. It's telling me I don't have any data connected yet. So what I'm going to need to do is add that SharePoint list as a data source. Click the little data silo over here on the left, go to add data. And in your connectors, you should have some sort of SharePoint connection with your Microsoft 365 account. If you click that, it should automatically read in your most used SharePoint sites. I have a couple here. And it's going to know that you have those lists created. In our case, it's called the personal balance sheet. So just press connect and we can 
bring that in. Here in the upper left is all of the properties of the item that you're selecting in your Power App. So I've got the form selected here. And on the data source item, I want that personal balance sheet SharePoint list. I want that to be my data source. Then on edit fields, I can bring in the different items I want to be able to edit or write back to. So I want asset, I want balance, I want the name, nope, sorry, I want the type. Press add there. So I've added a little attachments area too, if you want to attach like an account statement or an end of year balance for like a 401k or an IRA, uh, just something specific to what we're doing. If I go back to screen one, I want to adjust what happens when we click this plus icon. So I've got the on select property here. And when we select this, what I want to happen is, is I want that form we just created to reset. So that form is called edit form one and the new form function basically clears it out and makes it a new empty one so that we can add new records. That's what I want the plus to do. And of course, in order to add a new record, we have to go over to that page where the form is. So that's navigate to screen two. I'll close that, press enter. And let's just test that out and make sure it does what we want. Right, so it navigated us to screen two and it's completely blank for a new record. Now, of course, if I don't want to make a new one and I just want to edit, what I can do here is on this little carrot for each of these items, if I say navigate to screen two, and before we navigate to screen two, we want to do edit form. We want to make sure that form is in edit mode. It's not blanked out for new records. That's edit form. Edit form one is the name of the form and navigate to screen two so that we can actually edit it. Press enter there and let's test it out. Oh, no item to display. So what we need to do on the form is we need to address the item property, which is here. And in here, we are going to do a lookup function. And this, I swear, will be the most complicated part of this whole video. And what we need to do is we need to link the data that's coming from our Power BI dashboard over to a record that's in our SharePoint list. So it knows what to edit and write back to. So the source is going to be that personal balance sheet, our SharePoint list. And the condition is going to be, is the ID, this is where the ID field comes into play, is the ID equal to the gallery one selected ID, right? Because if we click that carrot, we've selected that record and it's going to pull that ID for whatever we just selected. So close that up, press enter. And look, it auto populated, it automatically knew what we wanted. We had that carrot for the 401k selected with the balance of 20,000. So let's do a little formatting here. So assuming we make a change here, we probably want to know if it took, if it actually saved to that SharePoint list accurately. So there's a few properties over here, like on failure or on success. I'm going to go to on success and I'm going to basically say, you know, if it saves successfully, notify me with the word success. And I want the notification type to be success. And then once that happens, I want to go back to that home screen to screen one. So let's actually test this out right now. I hit the play button in the upper right. Let's say I change this to 30,000. I press the check mark gave me that success, navigated me back to the first page, but let's, let's actually ensure that it worked by hitting refresh on my SharePoint and it changed from 20,000 to 30,000. So that worked great. A couple things to clean up here in Power Apps before we jump back into our Power BI dashboard. It's on our little X icon here. I basically just want that to be a, almost like a cancel button, right? So all I want to do is if we click that, I want to go back to screen one and testing that out, hitting the X, navigates this back. Perfect. 
Okay, and the last thing we haven't tested is if we create new accounts for our personal balance sheet, does it actually work? And let's do a big pile of gold bars at 100,000, and of course an asset. Make sure that works as well. So we are stacking up the assets here, and let's hop back over into Power BI, and I will show you how it flows through to our dashboard. Last little trick I wanted to show you is a bit of conditional formatting here. So I've got all my assets in green, and I've got my liabilities in this kind of light salmon reddish color. So again, we're back in the properties section, and I've selected the text box here. And for Phil, I'm going to do a simple if statement. And it's going to be if this item type is equal to asset, then I want color dot light green, else color dot light salmon. Don't ask me why there's no light red. There's only light salmon. So we've got some good conditional coloring here on our account balances. And one final, final, I already said final, but this is final, final trick is over here on items, instead of just having it organized by alphabetical A to Z, you can apply a sort by columns. And of course, remember this front page is just connected to our Power BI dashboard. So the data source here is going to be that Power BI integration dot data and sort by the type there. So assets are going to be first, liabilities second. Make sure you hit both save and publish. This is a common concept in Power Apps. You have to both save it to the cloud, to your Power Apps tenant, as well as publish it. So just publishing a new version. And then hop back over into your Power BI dashboard and give it about a minute and your new publish changes will show up here in your Power Apps visual. So let's see this in action. And one thing to remember is we are using SharePoint as a data source and it's on import mode. So this is not real time changes, but I will show you exactly how it flows through into your data set and your dashboard. Let's say I got a new vehicle and it is a super dope vehicle. It's worth a hundred grand. The change saved successfully and what we have is the SharePoint source has updated to that $100,000, but this front page is connected live to our Power BI dashboard. It is still showing the $20,000. So go to your data set or what's now known as semantic model, hit refresh now, make sure the refresh goes swimmingly, and then head back to your report and back in your report, you will see that that vehicle value did get updated and it is also updated here in the front of the app. Now, of course, it'd be a lot better if we could do this real time and we can with two other different data sources. They're a little more advanced in that they could require some additional licensing or having you stand up, you know, a proper database like a SQL server. Um, so the next video, we are going to be doing all this in Dataverse and it will actually be real time and we can trigger the refresh from the Power App itself. But all the foundational knowledge is exactly the same. And of course, you can refresh those data sets depending on your Power BI uh, Pro license. I think it's eight times a day if you have a higher license than that. I think it's a much higher number, like 45 or something. Um, and you can schedule those refreshes as well if you are making edits. Of course, in this view, it's updating your account balances. I don't think you're going to be doing that more than uh, quarterly or annually. And for this use case, I think it works pretty well just to use that SharePoint list as a backend. So all in all, I hope it was a super useful video. It's basically a crash course for super beginner Power Apps use and how to tie it into a Power BI dashboard with a write back capability. So if you have any questions or comments, um, leave them below. And I look forward to doing some real-time updates with the Dataverse and right back in the next video. Thanks.